the Canoe Bivy. This is a quick to set up temporary shelter that you can have lunch break under to get yourself out of the wind and rain and can be adjusted so you can sleep under it instead of taking your tent. I'd like to show you some of my favourite ways to set these shelters up. These have been tried and tested in wind and rain all over the highlands of Scotland and abroad. First things first, we need to get the canoe on its side, lean it over slightly and make sure it doesn't fall on top of us. Let's look at two different ways to do that. Firstly, and the most common way, which is good for a daytime lunch break, is propping the canoe up using two canoe paddles. We've always got the paddles with us when we're canoeing and this is the best way to get your canoe stable. Here we've put the canoe paddle shafts through the seats and they've just pressed up against the bottom of the boat. In this example, our lawn is rather flat and hard and the canoe paddle kept slipping. So I've put a tent peg right in front of it. I would expect normally the outdoor ground is a little bit softer and we'd be able to lift the paddle and wedge it into the ground to make it secure. That will be plenty. The second way of securing our canoe from not falling over is going to be using the painter or the rope, which should be attached to either end of your canoe. We're going to pass it. Lucy, can you help pull the rope through there? Pass it through the seat, pull it tight, and now throw it over the back of the canoe. Brilliant. We're going to do that on both sides. Now we've got our painter or rope over the side of the canoe, it's time to tie an overhand knot on the bite or on the double to make a loop. And we're going to peg that down to the ground and that will stop the canoe falling over. We need to make sure when we wrap the tarp around the canoe that the wind doesn't get up underneath it and get into our shelter. magic. There are a few different ways of securing your tarpaulin to the ground now. Let's look at option one, which is really simple. We're just going to use one, two, three, four, five pegs in a row on a straight line to peg the tarpaulin tight to the ground to hopefully stop the wind getting under it. Lucy, you and I, let's move away from each other now to pull the tarpaulin tight. Brilliant. So as you can see, if we peg this down tight and hard, that's pretty good wind defence. And now the creative bit. For a lunch break, we want a nice view and we want to make sure the wind coming over the top of the canoe doesn't get inside it. So we need to make a gazebo or porch. How about raise the front central ridge line up higher and then have both edges coming down low to allow water to shed off and maybe even collect with a cup for some washing up after lunch. One of the best ways to raise up your front porch is using the fabulous clove hitch knot. Do have a look at one of my other videos on how to tie a clove hitch. It's a really useful camping knot and this particular knot doesn't slip up and down your pole or your canoe paddle and it's just what you need. Let's guess that we're gonna have the porch quite high here. And now this knot, when it's pulled up or down, doesn't slip. By degrees, it goes way out towards the You can stand your pole up if you want. I love this element of canoe tarping. Adjusting the height of all of your edges is now crucial. So if the wind and rain is coming slightly from one side, lower that side to give you more defense and protection. Let's adjust the clove hitch then and lower the edge of the tarp down to make it a bit more cozy in here. So to adjust the clove hitch, take the tension off the string by dropping the pole. And now you should be able to push both ends in together, which softens this constricting knot and we can slide it down. 
because my tarpaulins all have elastic on them, we didn't need to re-peg it out, which was really flexible. But if you don't have the elastic, quickly go and adjust your peg. And that should be something you could expect to do every now and then. Let's turn our daytime shelter into a sleeping shelter by dropping the edges down and popping pegs through the corner of your tarp. Ready, steady, go. Lucy and I, we're pulling our edge apart. If you go your way, I'll go my way. We want it nice and tight. Tighter, tighter, tighter. Peg it down. Straight in line. And down we go. Job done. Well done. Let's look at a second way to attach your tarpaulin to the canoe. This time we're going to wrap the tarpaulin underneath the canoe and tie the strings on to each end of the canoe and in the center we can tuck it under or pass your piece of string under the canoe and tie it onto the thwart in the middle on the other side which knot would you tie here folks i would choose a bowline or a couple of half hitches which is the overhand knot twice a bowline is really good because it can be released after you've pulled it tight. Here Lucy's tied a couple of half hitches. Excellent job. Well done. Okay, Lucy, if you and I walk away from each other. Brilliant, let's pull it down perfect there. Wrap our string underneath the canoe. And walk around to the other side. Lucy, if you and I can pull our strings away from each other, if you go towards that end of the canoe, and I'll go this way a bit, stop there, perfect. I'm going to tie my canoe, my string off, just around the handle here, with a couple of half hitches. One, two, nice and quick, two half hitches as well, good job. Let's have a look at the middle part of the tarpaulin then. Ooh, that's looking brilliant. The tarpaulin is wrapped tight against the canoe. We pass the string around here to you. And if I lower this part of the canoe, you should be able to creep underneath the tarpaulin to the center of the boat, Lucy. Yes. And can you pull it tight? Perfect, stop there. And let's have a look. Can you tie your red string, hooray, to the middle of that, to that canoe uh, thwart there. Pull tight, that's one. the one, yes, perfect. And for our canoe sleep out, we need to have a ground sheet. So you need to use your tarpaulin. Either wrap it all the way around the canoe and pull it underneath to sleep on it. Most of us don't have a tarpaulin long enough. So why not use another one? And I found a thick piece of tarpaulin, much cheaper PVC thing, which is gonna be a great ground sheet. So I'm going to try and use and see if this works, pass my painter or rope through the strings that keep the buoyancy bag attached to the canoe. Lucy, are you happy to let go? How is it? Now let's test it a bit. We need to give it a rock and a wiggle. So we're stress testing it, folks. We don't want the canoe to fall over on us accidentally. Basic shelter made again. We've become a lunchtime snack shelter. It's roasting out here. So we're about to have lunch under here. I've noticed the edge of the tarpaulin is drooping a little bit. That gives us an opportunity for an adjustment. Check the angle of all of your poles. I like them vertical. We're turning our tarpaulin canoe shelter into a sleepable system. And that means we need the edges pegged down to the ground, but we need to leave enough space in the center along the ridge for the bodies, for the people to sleep in. If it's just one of you in the middle, there's gonna be plenty of space, lucky you. If there's a few more of you, we're going to need to raise up that central area some more. So this ridge line is now the bit that I'm particularly interested in. 
and I'd like to extend a rope above the middle of the tarpaulin attached with clove hitches to a pole at one end and either to a second pole at this end or pegged down to the ground. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to tie a ridge line above the central area of the tarpaulin Now I want to give the centre of the tarp a bit of a lift. We want to give it some extra structure rather than relying on just pulling the two ends. So a good quality tarp has some extra loops in it. So thread your rope along it. Have you learnt to thread your clove hitch? We just saw one there. And now as usual, we're going to peg this end down to the ground using our overhand knot on the double and a big strong peg. And now we can continue dropping the rest of the tarpaulin, knowing that we've got a high ridge line keeping the tent up in the middle. Sliding my clove hitch. Down, down, down. Here's another option for extending your ridge line. Clove hitch at the top of the pole extended our blue cord because we ran out of length and now it runs along the ridge to the other pole. We've now got a lovely tight structure pegged down on most sides and we have one canoe paddle still up on this side left over from the earlier shape which is just giving the kids and the dog a bit of light and air in there. But let's drop that down now and practice for the sleeping out to see how it looks. <laughs> and look what's happened. I've adjusted one peg and I've created an area of slack, which means another one minute's work, full peg adjustment. really aerodynamic now and a properly good wind shelter, rain shelter, sleeping pod, ready for the night. Play around with the edge of your tent to see how you want to adjust it for the night. The gaps at the far end allow plenty of air movement and circulation so you won't have many worries with condensation but you could peg these two bits down. Remember, I'm still not standing on my pegs. Push or tap them. If it was a very humid night with lots of condensation and you weren't worried about rain and it was a warm night, why not raise it up a little bit? And it'll give you a lovely light gap at the end here to look through. When you wake up in your canoe tarp in the mornings, decide which edges you're going to raise up for your view. Remember, if you're cooking inside or around the edge of your canoe tarp, make sure it's well above you to give you lots of freedom and space. Fire and all these plastic materials don't go well together. Play it safe and give yourselves lots of light and air so you can also escape the system. Another five seconds. We've raised up the corner and 
We've got a huge vista. Let's look at another quick fix for some predictable problems with our canoe campout with the tarpaulin system. And now we're looking at windproofing. So the wind is coming from behind the canoe and over the tarpaulin, but look at both the edges of the canoe. I can see light underneath there, which means wind could be whistling under there. If this is a brief lunchtime stop, we could put our waterproofs on, but it's still going to be cold. What have you got with you as a canoeist that you could stuff and wedge under the ends of the canoes to block the wind? I'm just going to stuff some buoyancy aids underneath the edges as my wind break. This can all only take a few seconds, folks, and always take the time to do it. In my experience, it's always worth spending a couple of minutes getting comfortable for the long period of relaxation that you can enjoy afterwards. Finally, let's have a think about protecting ourselves from midges and creepy crawlies. Very often in a wild camp, you'll be okay just sleeping wild underneath your tarpaulin shelter in your sleeping bag roll mat. Um, have a think and do some research about using a bivy bag and perhaps a line of defence could be using a midgy net if you live in Scotland or in a, a part of the world that has flies that might bite. Very often underneath a shelter like this, the bugs don't tend to disturb you much or at all. And I've had a few nights out in the garden during the lockdown of 2020 without anything untoward happening. Did you know many of your tents can be put up just using the inners? So a lot of them are set up with inner first without having to put the outer on. So perhaps you could use what you've got already and set up your inner tent underneath your tarp and enjoy a really extra protected night, but with a huge great veranda and space around it. I'm inside an inner tent underneath my large DD Hammocks three by three and a half meter tarp. And I'm looking out of the mesh section of my tent and the view is huge. I've got a panoramic view through my tent all the way outdoors. And this is magical. <laughs> There's loads of space, lots of light, fantastic views. Enjoy setting up your canoe camping tarp, everybody. Try it at home or take it with you out on your canoe trips.